two beer nerds, and seven beers. This is Fresh Fest with Guzzle and Frag. Okay, so it looks like we're moving on to beer number four here uh, from White Line Brewing Company out of, uh, what, Massachusetts? And Grist House Brewing out of Pennsylvania. Um, looks like this guy is called Fight the Sour. So given its name, I would assume that there's going to be like a little bit more tart uh, kind of qualities on the top. We'll see if that's kind of the case. But uh, pretty cool label here. Uh, we'll kind of face you just in there. Um, it's a bramble cocktail inspired sour ale brewed with blackberry, juniper berries, and lemon juice. Hot fact about bramble, uh, bramble is just really a loose term for anything that is just kind of like a brambled bush or shrub. So thinking about like blackberries, raspberries, um, like even roses are considered like bramble. So it's just, I feel like it's just like a, not even a fancy word, right? Cause it's, it's, it's rough, it's brush, it's bramble. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had a bramble cocktail. I, I can't speak to that, what that actually tastes like. So um, mm -hmm. this should be interesting. For sure. But I'm always really intrigued by cocktail-based uh, sours and, and stouts and stuff that are uh, emulating a uh, cocktail flavor. I've had Moscow Mule sours, for example. Beautiful color. Yeah, absolutely. So it feels like with the previous beer, um, the currants gave it that deep, dark color here, yeah. right? Whereas if we're looking at like blackberry, juniper berries, and lemon juice, maybe like it's, it's super light. The color is gorgeous though. <clears throat> Grist house, yeah. So here you go, you have your fight the sour. Fight the sour. Yeah, yeah awesome. Man. Let's, Let's get do it. it. Cheers. Cheers. So I'll say almost immediately on the nose, you can actually, and maybe it's because I've read it, but you can actually get a little lemon. I get the juniper, actually. Do you? Yeah, oh, that was, that's, the, that's that was so like the first flavor that hit me was the juniper. Actually, you know what, you're right. It's, uh, it's definitely there. I think like as I was just kind of like swallowing and then like you get it like mid palate, there is a little bit of that lemon juice or that like that slight acid and tart, uh, tart yeah. quality to it. Yep. But once again, not really fighting the sour, I'm actually embracing it because it's, well, this is really approachable, yeah, just like the last totally. one. Super easy, even keel across the palate. Not as fruit forward, still tasty. It's tasty, yeah, mm -hmm. and it, like I said, for me it was immediately, I got the juniper, mm -hmm. and then I get a little bit of the, the bramble, which kind of, I, I, the, the best way I can describe the flavor <sighs> of that is like, and, and this sounds like a, a like an, a flavor, an undesirable flavor, but like a viney kind of flavor, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Then, okay. the, like Kent was saying, the, the the lemon is there, but it's very subtle, and it's mm -hmm. also towards the finish of the the back end of the beer. So, you know, again, we're not brewers, but like my guess is they put that lemon in there to kind of balance out the flavors mm -hmm. to have them kind of meld together with that kind of like citrusy uh, characteristic to it. So. Um, but yeah, super easy drinking, um, not overly tart, mm -mm. and not also not heavily acidic. In fact, you know what this beer actually reminds me of is a Gosa style sour, which is a salted, yeah. salted sour. And even though there's no salt in this, I mean, you could hallucinate that just a little. It bit. It tastes like a Gosa because yeah. it has that like maybe it's the citrus or the uh, just the combination of them all, but it's almost like salt, like a. A, a salty feel to it like a gosa would have and if you if you don't know what a gosa is it is a german style sour with salt this is sort of like that but again it's it's not because there's no salt but it does have that kind of like i don't know um profile to it yeah absolutely anytime that you look at the word gosa you wouldn't think to pronounce it gosa right like you just look like goes and I learned, I feel like the hard way. Yeah, and that's, I think that happens for everybody. Mm -hmm. You start saying ghosts and like, you'll go to a bar and order a ghost or something, or you go to your your beer store, even like a total wine or something, and you know, oh yeah, what's this ghost here? And uh, yeah. you're probably not gonna be corrected. For, I, you know, I, I think I went about a year, um, you know, getting into beer and getting more into it and getting more nerdy. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I think out of the blue, like one day, um, I was at a brewery or something. I was like, I'll take your ghost. And they're like, no, it's Gosa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, 
okay, I, you know, cool. Like, I appreciate being corrected. You know, they didn't do it in a way that was like, you know, they could be kind of rude sometimes if, if you do, you know. They were did it in a respectful way. And then, you know, sure enough, just because I was curious, I went and looked it up and I was like, oh, yeah, that's how you say it. So, <laughs> yeah, super interesting. Uh, I think I had the exact opposite to where I was in a brewery um, in Missouri. Well, we won't name names. But uh, as, as I had gone in there, I was really hyped up on gozes, right? Like, or a goze style beer, and they specialize in them. And so uh, as I had gone in, I'm like, yo, like, I really love what you guys are doing with your, like, goze and, the, and that particular style. And, you know, I went on this really long tangent with uh, this gentleman, and the entire time he's just kind of staring deep into my soul, judging me. And he's like, yeah, it's gosa. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess, like, I, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but at the same time, just, like, what do you want? Leave me alone because you have no idea what you're talking about at all. And so it was just, it, you know, it's a little bit of a memory, but at the same time, like, I, I still appreciate the style. I'm going to call this actually, like, a gosa yeah. kind of a style instead of, like, a sour, but, like, it's still. It's, yeah, it's super um, easy drinking. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that it for sure uh i feel like warm summer day once again yeah maybe not for all times i think uh the previous beer that we had had what uh clock with no hands um that one i could almost drink at any given time yeah. but this guy once again i think i feel like it, it has its place like on a warm spring summer totally day. yeah uh, so yeah, yeah this is cool last year <clears throat> at the great american beer festival Weldworks Brewing, uh, based out of Greeley, Colorado, they made a barrel-aged hot taco hot sauce uh, goza. <laughs> and they served it uh, with a taco on the side. So <clears throat> you would literally, you'd eat the taco, you'd drink the goza, and it was like, it sounds terrible. It really does, but at the same time, like that is probably one of my all-time A favorite beers, but uh, for that particular style, there's like nothing that could beat it. Like you take maybe like a Taco Bell kind of like hot sauce, you infuse that into a Goza. <laughs> it's like, it was phenomenal. Was it tequila man. barrel? No, it was, I, you know what? I'm unsure. Tequila uh, or gin maybe? How genius is that? You know, you go to a big beer festival and you go, oh, hey man, did you get the taco beer? You're like the what, what? And then it's like, yeah, they're giving out a taco with the beer, like that's genius. Like. I, I'm sure it didn't last long because, I mean... Oh, no, it, 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 it definitely flew off the shelves. And in that way, like, we're talking about, like, experimentation, yeah. right? like, pushing the boundaries, right? Like, thinking, like, what... <clears throat> if this style's been done to death, what can we do to do something new? And, like, Wellworks, though, is a brewery that, through experimentation, would... would I, I, don't, I don't think they would have put that beer out if they weren't, like, super stoked about it, you know? Like, because some sure. breweries do that, they'll... They'll experiment, and the, the beer won't really turn out the way they intended, but guess what? you got to pay the bills, so <laughs> yeah. they end up selling the beer anyway, which I think is a really bad thing, and I wish brewers wouldn't do it. I definitely understand why they do it, because you know you invested time, you invested brewing equipment, you invested mm -hmm. all the resources to all the malts and the hops and everything that went into making the beer. Sometimes it's... it's uh, even barrels you know that were are not yeah. cheap, like bourbon barrels, secondhand... Spirit barrels are, are actually, you have to go through a broker. It's like, it's, there's a whole process to get them and they're not cheap. So I totally get it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, your name's on that beer. You know, yeah. if you put it out and it's like not good, I, well, what's that going to do for the future of your, of your beers? And, you know, we've had Wellworks, you know, we're, we're beer nerds. So for us, like mm -hmm. even not even being anywhere near Colorado, we've had it a, a, a many times and you've gone to GABF which I've, I've yet yeah. to do so I hope someday I can do that but One day, uh, for sure I've been to Denver though so I've been I've actually gone to Weld Works and maybe I have some photos uh, <laughs> I'll have to dig through my camera archive but uh, Weld Works was awesome um, and yeah I would totally trust them to do something outlandish like a like a taco themed or like a maybe a whatever the taco gosa was mm -hmm. like that hot sauce they would pull it off the hot sauce gosa Ugh. yeah like yeah. They, they're a brewery that like they set out to do something mm -hmm. crazy, and they would pull it off. And if they didn't pull it off, I don't think they would have put it out there. You know, so no, I mean, yeah, I feel like they they definitely value quality over <clears throat> profit uh, in that way. And I, I I agree with you. Like uh, I totally understand it. But at the same time, if you're trying to represent your brand, 
I feel like it's just more of a, like, we're gonna put out like top quality as like good as we can make it or something that you can be proud of. But once again, if you have to pay the bills. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. I mean, some breweries can absorb that cost and I guess others, you know, it's like, shit, if we do that, we're not gonna make our electric bill this month. You know, so it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not always like really cut and dry, but. It's almost like a, <clears throat> like a whiskey or a bourbon distillery where they have to age their things for at least, let's say like five years arbitrarily, right? Then they start with like vodka or gin or something light because yeah. they need to pay the bills, right? That's not necessarily their emphasis uh, or their end game, but at the same time, it's like, hey, look, if we can put out like a decent gin and build our brand there and then like on the back end, we can have like a really great whiskey, bourbon, whatever it might be. Like, I think that's that's kind of the issue as well. It's just, it's it's business and it, it just, it's it's kind of like part of that. Once again, it's like heart versus business. What can you do? It's crazy, man. Everybody says that it's, we're in a bubble and maybe there's some truth to that, but I thought by now it would slow down. And I mean, some breweries did close actually. Like um, there's one I know of called Joseph James and I actually made a video about it when I was playing some ridiculous game and I didn't even know they had closed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was one of my last bottles from them. And they were a brewery out of uh, Nevada. I think Henderson, oh, Nevada, somewhere okay. down there near near Vegas. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it wasn't the greatest brewery ever. But, like, I, I liked what they were doing because they they did a lot of barrel-age kind of, like, well, beers that I really like. Like, Old Ales, Barley Wines, Stouts, that kind of thing. So, I was sad to see them go, man. You know, it's it's always, like, it sucks to see breweries close. Yeah. But, I mean... They're opening up at a crazy pace. I don't know how long they'll be able to keep doing that, but we'll see what happens next year, I guess, too. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna win it. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed our Fresh Fest impressions. Thanks to my buddy Kent for joining up and sharing the beers. Like, subscribe, and let us know what you think. Stay tuned for more first impressions of the seven Fresh Fest beers. More great beer contents on the way. Hashtag Fresh Fridays, and we'll see you next Friday for Fresh Fest beer number five, a hazy IPA. Cheers.